Hello everyone. Today we're going to be doing a really fun project. We're going to make a family tree quilt. This is a totally customizable quilt with pictures. You can add as many pictures as you would like. And I've modified my quilt so that everyone could play along. So a couple of years ago, I did a family tree quilt. It was sort of a one of a kind quilt with a great big tree and it had lots of photos and leaves on it. And it's on my Lisa Cape and Quilts Facebook page. Many of you have gone through those pictures and seen that quilt and asked me about it and asked if I would make a pattern for that quilt. So that quilt was all done on my long arm with a process or a technique called reverse applique. So what I've done so that everyone could make a quilt similar to that is I've modified the pattern. So let me show you what we're making today. This quilt measures 36 inches wide and 42 inches long. And we're going to be doing a little bit of an unconventional quilt method today. Well, I say unconventional. We're using fabric paints and applique. And I'm going to use my art projector, which means you could possibly make this quilt a lot bigger if you have one. However, if you don't have an art projector, I have included a 17 page PDF that you can tape together and make this quilt and follow along with us. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over all of the things that you need to gather for this project. Now to make this quilt, this is exactly what you're going to need. You need some fabric for your quilt top. I have a yard of fabric and we're going to cut that to 36 inches wide and 42 inches long. So basically you're just about cutting the salvage edge off of that yard of fabric. You'll need some batting that is a little bit larger than your quilt top and you can use uh, scraps of batting and piece them together. It's a great way to use up those extra pieces of batting. For the backing of this quilt you'll need two and a quarter yards of fabric and you'll piece that together to make your quilt back. For the binding of this quilt you can just use the extra back fabric and trim that and bind your quilt or you can uh, use 3 8 of a yard of fabric. We'll cut that into five strips that measure two and a half inches wide. Now you can add borders. They're totally optional and I think it would look fabulous with borders. You could add one, two, three or four borders. You can make them however wide you want, but keep in mind that all the measurements for the back, backing and batting and binding, those are all for the quilt that measures 36 by 42. If you add borders to your quilt, you'll need to modify the measurements for the other pieces that make up your quilt. You're going to need some scrap fabrics for your leaf applique. And you'll also need a fusible, your preferred fusible, that you like to do raw edge applique with. Or you can do it with freezer paper. It's totally up to you. You'll need some brown fabric that we're going to cut into strips that measure one and a half inches wide. You want your strips to be longer than your photos. Okay, we're going to use that as little frames around our photos. You'll also need some scrap brown fabric that matches your frame fabric. We're going to use that to back our photos and we'll get to that here in a little bit. You'll need um, an art projector. If you don't have one, we have a backup plan. You'll need brown fabric paint. Uh, for this quilt, I'm going to actually use an acrylic paint and some uh, golden fabric medium. So that's an option too. You'll need uh, some heat erasing pens to transfer your tree design or um, some fabric markers. I think I'm actually going to use a brown fabric marker when I trace my tree because I'm painting brown fabric over top of it. It's a little bit easier to see. You'll need your photos printed onto fabric. We're going to take a time out for a second. Let's talk about printing photos on fabric. Now there's all different kinds of ways that you can do this. I think the first thing we need to do is figure out, is this going to be a quilt that you are going to ever wash? Is it going to be a quilt that gets used and at some point it might go through the wash? If so, 
you want to make sure that you set those inks and there's all types of products to do this. If you're printing with an inkjet printer, you can get uh, all types of fabric sheets that are already treated like the June Taylor's uh, color fast sheets. There's all kinds of different ones that you can use. You can even treat your photos after you print them with products called or, or like retain. I have some of that coming today. So those are all ways that if you're going to wash your quilt, you need to do a little bit of extra work to your photos before adding them to this quilt. Now, if you're like me and you know that this quilt is never going to get washed, it's going to be hung up on a wall and uh, at most uh, maybe dusted off, <laughs> then you don't have to really too much worry about your photos fading in the wash. I'm going to be using my new laser printer. It's a color laser printer. I've already tried and uh, I did a test project. My toner, my project faded in the wash. So I have Retain coming. I'm still in the experimental phase with that printer. But it prints beautifully on fabric and I'm just going to heat set it with my iron so that it just doesn't fade over time. But I do know that if I wash this quilt, the inks will fade. So this, my quilt, is for decoration purposes only. If you want to wash your quilt, make sure you go through the steps to secure those inks permanently and so that you're not really disappointed when you wash your quilt. Okay, let's go back. And then you're going to need this one page PDF that comes with the pattern in my Etsy shop. Uh, it's actually a three-part uh, three uh, pattern. Okay, you get this one page that has your tree design to use with your projector. And you get two traceable PDFs to do the raw edge applique with your leaf patterns. The second part of this listing is for the SVG. It comes with it. Uh, if you have a cutting machine like a Cricut or a Silhouette or a Brother Scan and Cut, you can import your SVGs and have your cutter cut out your leaf appliques. And then the third part of this listing or this pattern is a 17 page PDF that you can tape together. Let me grab that real quick. Okay, I got it. This is your 17 page PDF. It includes this first page that has your grid. This is how all of your pages get taped together. Just lay them out in this manner, tape them together. Then you can pin this whole great big piece behind your quilt top fabric. Then hold it up to a window or maneuver it over your light box and simply trace the tree design right to your quilt top. So I'm gonna be doing the art projector. I have the easy tracer and I have to wait until it's dark because the light in it is so not bright <laughs> and even with my curtains drawn it is too bright in here to do it during the day so I'm going to be doing my tracing this evening uh, let's see I can go ahead I've already got my brown strips for my frames made and I have my photos printed so I'm going to go ahead and walk you along as I do the frames around my photos and then I think we'll be waiting until tonight to trace. Now, I wanted to say, if you have an art projector and you wanted to make this quilt larger, I think you most definitely could cut a much larger quilt top and then maneuver the art projector so that it projects it large onto your wall and then trace it that way. So that's a great way to make a bigger quilt if you wanted to. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the frames around my photos. I think we'll start there. Now we're ready to start with some fun stuff on this quilt. You'll see I have my pictures printed on fabric. So to print my pictures, I used freezer paper and adhered it to the back side of some cotton fabric. This is a like a really good grade cotton muslin fabric purchased from Joann's and it is uh, like a really bright white. I adhered the um, freezer paper to the back side of my fabric 
And then once that was on, I went ahead and trimmed my fabric and the freezer paper to eight and a half by 11, which is like the standard size of a sheet of paper. That went through my color laser printer and here are my pictures. Now, you'll see I've already taken off the freezer paper and what I love about this method is this is not stiff. It's very flexible. It's just fabric. There's no weird feeling to it. And uh, yeah, the pictures are pretty fantastic. So I have my pictures and of course you can add as many pictures as you would like to your quilt in all different sizes. So you have some long ones and some like four by seven. <laughs> and once you're at this stage, you can go ahead and cut your pictures and separate them. Keep in mind, we're going to be sewing frames to our pictures. And so you will have a quarter inch seam allowance. So if that matters, uh, keep that in mind when you're trimming your photos. Once you have your photos trimmed, the first thing we're going to do to add the frames is we're going to add two pieces of our one and a half inch frame fabric to two sides just like that. We'll take that to the sewing machine and sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance and then press that open. And once it's pressed open, you'll trim off any of the extra squaring up your picture as you're done. You'll look like this once you have those two added and trimmed away. These have been pressed open. Once you have these two pieces on, we're ready to add the next two. And then you'll press that open and trim away anything that hangs over the edges. Now once you're at this stage, I like to go ahead and back this with another piece of brown fabric that I've cut exactly to the size of my picture with the frame added. And then bring that to the sewing machine and I like to sew a quarter inch seam all the way on all four sides of my picture. Once that's done, we will go to the back side and cut a small slit. We'll separate the photo and our backing fabric. We'll just cut a small slit big enough for you to turn that picture right side out. And once it's turned right side out, this is what you look like yay there I am <laughs> now what I like to do is give that a good press once it's all turned and my corners are poked out and then I bring it to the sewing machine and I just do a straight stitch in the frame close to the picture and that just sort of helps hold everything nice and flat there's the slit right there that's gonna stay open we're gonna sew this entire piece to our quilt now you can either hand sew this onto our quilt top. You could do a blanket stitch, you could do a satin stitch, zigzag stitch, there's all kinds of different stitches, whichever way you prefer. But that is our picture with our little finished frame. So now I think it is dark enough that we can bring you over and I'll show you how I plan to use my art projector to trace out my tree. So now we're ready to go ahead and use this Easy Tracer projector. I have my uh, background fabric, my quilt top is up on the design wall and this is just resting on my table and it's plugged in, it has a little on and off switch. There's a light bulb down inside there and a mirror and magnifying glasses. If you've never seen any anything like this, that's what that is. These range like in the $30 range from places like Michaels and AC Moore's. Uh, don't know if Joanne Fabrics has these, uh, but yeah, they're pretty simple and um, <laughs> I have to use mine in the dark. So what I've done is I have 
my PDF and I've cut out this tree shape just like this and I'm going to place that if I remember correctly it goes in like that and it's just going to sit right inside that opening and the hardest part about using one of these projectors is getting the tree <laughs> exactly where you want it and how big you want it on your fabric so that's what usually takes me the longest sometimes I might even it might just be easier to move the fabric than it is to keep moving this all the way around so let me go ahead and get that set up and all in the right place and then I'm going to show you what that looks like okay I'm hoping that my camera picks that up uh, it's actually more clear in person than it's appearing in my viewfinder here on my camera. <laughs> so that's actually the image cast up onto my fabric there. And I actually had the tree upside down. I had to turn it around. <laughs> so there we are. At this point, it's exactly where I want it to be on my background fabric. And I'm ready to go ahead and start tracing this. So I'm going to use a brown fabric marker because I think that'll show up really well when I go to paint this. And I'm using brown paint so it'll all blend in when, it's, when I'm done. You could use a heat erasing pen and trace everything. And um, you could use a water soluble. Uh, sometimes those fade. Do those ever fade for you if you don't uh, use the marks right away and you leave it for like 24 hours? Do you ever find that that fades? I'm just wondering. <laughs> Some way you need to trace that onto your background fabric and then we're ready to start painting. So here we are with the lights back on and my tree is all traced onto my quilt top. So I just have a couple of things here I wanted to show you. So this little tiny white square you can barely make that out but that's our little tree on our PDF that's cut out. We have gone from that size to this size and of course you could blow this up however big you wanted to and that's one of the reasons why I love the projector even though I can really only use it at night <laughs> and then what I've also done is just pinned on one of my pictures so that you can kind of see uh, a reference as to the size of the photo that I was working with to the size of this tree um, there's not a whole lot of space. So if you have a lot of pictures, you might want to look at reducing the size of the pictures. Uh, this picture here is, is good. Uh, it's just going to fill up my tree really, really quick. Also, when printing your pictures, if you are enlarging your photo from its original state, you might get a little pixelated, so keep that in mind too. That's just a tip for printing photos. <laughs> Photos actually do better if you shrink them in size than if you blow them up larger. So it's getting kind of late and I have to get up early in the morning. So I'm going to just leave this here to dry overnight. Tomorrow I'm going to be painting in all of our tree area a solid brown with, uh, well I'm using acrylic paint and fabric medium. But you can use a fabric paint if you like. Good morning, it's a new day and we're ready to start painting. So I have my quilt top laying on my table. I've laid my batting that I'm going to use underneath of my fabric so that the paint does not bleed through and get onto my table. And I'm ready to start painting. So I've mixed my brown acrylic paint with my fabric medium. And if you are going in this route, you'll wanna make sure that you follow the directions for whichever type of fabric medium that you're using. And now comes the fun part of just painting in and uh, filling in our tree area with our brown paint. What I like about this is that if you have shaky hands like I do and you mess up, <laughs> you can simply add a picture right over top of <laughs> any areas that you're not completely happy with. So I'll just bring you along and show you different parts of me painting in this tree. Um, even though the tree is a little bit larger, 
the little pixie cup of brown paint I actually didn't even use half of the brown paint that I mixed up so I'm going to save that for another project down the road just put it in an airtight container if you love painting like I do then you're gonna find this part of the process a lot of fun <laughs> Now I will say, because I layered the batting underneath to protect my work table, this paint did seep through my quilt top and adhered to my batting. So keep that in mind. That's something I wanted to pass along to you. Uh, this actually kind of worked nicely though because it basted my top fabric to my batting. <laughs> There was no way I was going to be able to remove the batting from underneath. It sort of dried all together. So it acted as a basting <laughs> for my uh, batting. Keeping that in mind, here's something to think about. If you are wanting to do a satin stitch or zigzag stitch or a blanket stitch with your leaf applique and your photos before you layer your quilt, you might want to paint in your tree in different sections with something that is non-stick underneath your fabric to protect your work table, but won't stick to your quilt back as it's drying. I'm going to actually do all of my sewing my pieces down as I quilt my quilt. And so the paint seeping through and adhering to the batting, I'm perfectly fine with that. Depending on how fast you paint, this might take you just a little while, or if you're a little bit slower like me, this process uh, will be a good part of your afternoon. If you blow up your tree really large, then I imagine uh, that this part of the process might take you a good, a good long while. <laughs> Again, I think it all depends on how fast you can paint. So let's take a look at my tree once it's all painted in and I'm going to just let this sit and dry really well and then we can move on to heat setting according to the directions for the fabric medium or the fabric paints that you've used. Now that we've heat set the tree and that's all ready to go, I'm ready to go ahead and add my pictures. So when I had this up on the design wall, I pinned this picture up in place just to get a reference of how big the picture is. And at first I was thinking that that size picture would be okay. And if I only had two or three pictures to add, I think this size would be great. However, I have all of these pictures that I wanted to add. So you know what, I reconsidered my picture size. I spent a few more minutes and reprinted all of my pictures a little bit smaller so that they would be sized a little bit more proportionate and I could fit several more pictures into this quilt. So let me show you the size difference. I went from a this size to this size. Basically, I cropped all of my photos to about the size of a three by five index card and then some of my square pictures uh, are a little bit smaller than that. They're about, let's see, three and a half by three and a half maybe. And I think that that's a little bit more appropriate for this size quilt. So you could do your pictures any size. However, if you're adding a, a lot of pictures like I am, then you might want to reduce the size. I'll show you another example. I went from this size to this size and this is with the frame added onto it so I think I'll be able to fit a lot more pictures in and I think because the pictures are smaller the quality of the print is much better too so that's like two advantages <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and maybe save these pictures for another project Put those off to the side now I'm ready to attach my pictures so you can do this a couple of different ways you can pin them in place I plan on using some Fabri-Tac glue over the back and just 
permanently gluing them in place, stitching them down as I quilt my quilt. However, if you're not comfortable with that, you could attach them to your quilt top, stitch them in place, and then create the layers for your quilt. I think I'm going to go ahead and quilt all this while I'm stitching down my pictures and my leaves. So I'm going to start putting everything into place. And here comes the fun part of arranging everything exactly the way that you would like it. You can see some of my pictures are, let's see, I guess that's portrait mode. And then some of my pictures are in landscape. So I have a variety of different pictures that we can add. And now I'm just going to start arranging all of my pictures. I'll back you up so that you can see everything a little bit better and you can watch how I attach my pictures. What I like about this quilt is that you can be totally creative with the arrangement. Once you get a layout that you're really, really happy with, you can start either pinning your pictures into place or you can use a glue product like the Fabri-Tac glue and permanently put them down. I like the Fabri-Tac glue because it is permanent and once it's dry you can sew through it and it does not affect your sewing machine. You could also use like an Elmer's glue school glue product if you wanted to as well. Now what I like about my arrangement is I'm leaving a little bit of extra space in there in case we have additions to our family down the road. I can still add some more photos to my quilt. <laughs> now that the glue is dry on my pictures I can move my quilt around and I've brought it over to my pressing board because now is the time we can start adding the leaves. So on this page of the pattern you see there's two different leaf shapes so you could either choose one or the other and I've gone with this one. Now this is a template that you could use with freezer paper or your favorite fusible product and trace that onto let's say heat and bond light and then cut out your leaves that way so you do have these two tracing templates or you can use the provided SVG file and cut out your leaves the way that I did. <laughs> so. Here is a big stack of leaves. I've done them in a few different green colors. Imagine if you did them in fall colors, how pretty would that be? You could do a spring family tree quilt and then a fall family tree quilt. You could even do a winter one and leave all the leaves off. <laughs> so I have the heat and bond on the back of my leaves and now comes the fun part of just arranging and filling in all of the leaves. And I like mine going in all sorts of different directions. And so we can just start fusing those on. For this project, I'm using Heat and Bond Light, but keeping in mind that we might be all using some other different kind of fusible, you want to make sure that you are following the heating instructions for whichever type of product you are using. Now you'll see I still have my batting attached. That's not coming off. It is uh, permanently in place. So if you go in this route, uh, painting your tree with the batting underneath, you'll want to make sure that you use a batting that is like a cotton batting or like an 80-20, something that can withstand the heat of the iron. Uh, if you're using an all polyester batting and uh, it's sensitive to heat, you might want to figure out another way to paint your tree with something underneath of your fabric. What's fun about this quilt is you can add however many leaves that you want and arrange them in any manner that you would like. Now that all of my elements are added to the front of my quilt, I can go ahead and add the backing. I have the pretty side facing down and you'll see I'm going to use Elmer's glue <laughs> to glue based all three layers and any loose parts of my quilt top that didn't get basted with my paint. I'm using an upcycled sheet that belonged to my mom for my quilt back and that's a lot of fun. 
And once I've applied my glue, I'm just going to heat set it with a dry iron and dry that glue and baste my quilt. I'll give that back a little bit of a press as I work my way down to the bottom of the quilt. Of course, if you don't want to use the glue, you could certainly pin baste your quilt or use a spray basting. I'm just a huge fan of the glue. <laughs> Once all of the glue is dry, we're ready to go ahead and move over to the sewing machine and start sewing down our pictures. We're going to start with this picture here and I am using a blanket stitch. Of course, you can use any type of stitch that you would like to use. Now I have a confession. I'm not really great with a blanket stitch. I hardly ever use it, but I'm not going to ever get really good at doing a blanket stitch if I never use it. So I decided to go ahead and use that stitch on this quilt. The more that you do it, the better you'll get. <laughs> And I'm just using a brown thread in the top of my machine. And on the bottom, I've gone with a white bobbin thread, which is quite a bit thinner. And it'll blend in with my backing really, really great. Just working my way all the way around my photo with my blanket stitch. Again, if you don't want your stitches to show through, as the quilting on the back of your quilt, you might want to do this part of the process before you create your layers. What I like about doing it this way is I'm actually quilting my quilt at the same time as I'm stitching down my photos. You'll do this for each one of your photos and then we can move to our leaves. You'll see that I've switched my foot to a free motion foot you could certainly do a satin or zigzag stitch around your leaves, but I don't mind the raw edge on my leaves. And going in this direction with stitching down our leaves is much, much faster. I've switched my thread to a green thread and I'm just going to stitch all the way around the edge of each one of my leaves. I'll stitch this one down and then we can just jump right to the next leaf and stitch that one down. We'll do this for each one of the leaves that we've added to our quilt top. Once you have all of your leaves in place and stitched down, we're ready to move on to the quilting of our quilt. And again, this is something that you could get really creative with. Uh, you could do as much quilting as you wanted to do. I have a white thread now through the top of my machine and I'm just going to stitch around the tree and all of the elements that I've added and then I'm going to fill in my entire background with a very small meandering stitch. What that's going to do is lower my backing fabric a little bit flatter and the tree and the leaves and the pictures will sort of pop off of my quilt. Once you have your quilt all quilted up, we're ready to go ahead and trim and square up our quilt.
Now that my quilt is all nice and quilted, I'm going to start with a, my largest square ruler and trim each one of my corners, just like you see me doing here. That's going to square up and make those corners nice and exact. And then I'll take my straight ruler and trim off the sides. This is the manner that I square up each one of my quilts with and it gives me those nice pointy corners. <laughs> if you're wanting to use the back as your binding, then of course you'll be trimming this up a little bit differently. And I'll add a link to a video that shows you how to do that down in the description box. If you are making a traditional binding for your quilt, then once you're done with this part, go ahead and prepare your five strips of binding and you're ready to bind and finish your quilt. I'll go ahead and bind my quilt and then we can look at some finished pictures of my family tree quilt. This is the back of my quilt and I really, really liked using the white bobbin thread to quilt my quilt with all of the different color threads on the top. It worked very, very nicely. This is the top of my quilt and I've left some extra room so that I can add a picture of Harlan's grandparents. And as our family grows, we can add new pictures. So thankful that you've joined along in this process with me and made this quilt alongside of me. And if you make this quilt, I would love to see your pictures. You can share them over on the Creative Crew group. A link will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching along and we'll see you really soon. Bye everybody.